Hello, everyone. Um, good morning from Japan and greetings to everyone around the world joining in. Um, uh, in this talk, I want to guide you and introduce you to SUSE AI, a privacy aware smart assistant. Um, let's first start with a short self introduction. So, I'm by education, I'm a mathematical logician and theoretical computer scientist while doing manual logic proof theory, but I won't bother you with proof theory. I guess most of you would run away. Um, in my real life, I'm currently working at Axelia, uh, a Japanese uh, company doing security, machine learning, blockchain, formal verification of protocols, this kind of stuff. Um, in my spare time uh, and open source activity, I'm the main developer of Tech Life, so the big tech typesetting system developed by Don Knuth back quite some years. So I wrote the Tech Life Manager, uh, the whole infrastructure, doing a lot for doing a lot for Japanese support since I live in Japan. And besides Tech, I'm also a Debian developer, um, currently responsible for quite a lot of stuff, including the AMD Rockem stack, the Julia programming language, the tech, all the tech packages, C KDE and Cinnamon desktop environments, and well, quite a lot of other stuff. And if I'm free and uh, I usually bring clients into the mountains, I'm also a professional mountain guide, a uh, member of the Japanese Mountain Guide Association board, and yeah, doing whatever comes up. So first of all, I want to thank my company, Axelia, who allows me first to do a lot of open source stuff and community stuff uh, and who supports me in this area. I'm very grateful. We are doing a lot of CDN, security, web services, virtual reality and services for engineers, mostly in Japan, of course. I also want to introduce you to the FOSS Asia community um, with whom we are developing this smart speaker, the SUSE AI. Um, I think the FOSS Asia community is one of the biggest uh, open source community in, in Asia. So our aim here is really to bring together a, a, a community across all borders. So we have members from practically all Asian countries and many more countries, not only Asian countries, but mostly. And not only across borders, also across genders, across ages, I think it's the most, I mean, I have seen a lot of uh, development communities and I think it's the most diverse community I've ever participated in. Um, if you look at the photos, you will probably guess what I mean. Okay, so FOSS Asia is not only doing this, we are doing a lot of big events and well, a lot of small and several big events for the engineers and developers. We have, there is the open, also the FOSS Asia Summit once a year with a few thousand participants and hundreds of lectures in Singapore and further coding events, competitions, a lot of stuff going on. Um, at the same time, of course, we're working with the top class open source, free and open source hardware and software uh, companies and communities developing by ourselves uh, open hardware and open software a lot. And I think above all is that we are trying really to incubate and accelerate acceptance, employment and development of free and open source, not only in the main countries where we are from, like Singapore, Japan, India, but all around the Asian continent, which spans quite a lot. So here in the background, you see a few of where our members and a few our members and our projects are running from. So let's go to smart speakers, the current topic. Um, I cannot really ask now live uh, who is who actually has one of these devices at home, but I guess with a bit of techy uh, community or tech in, within the techy community, I guess most people will have either uh, a Google Home, uh, Echo or some other the, uh, smart speaker from Apple, whatever. I mean, there are a lot of smart speakers nowadays on the market and more or less with the same functionality and the same problem. So, I mean, they are very handy. 
I have to say, personally, I use them a lot, mostly actually for playing music, I have to say. Um, uh, if I want to know the weather, I just look outside and the news I check other ways, but still, I mean, okay, it's handy. There's only one problem, and I think most people will be aware of it, and that is, well, security-wise, these speakers are, um, well, at best, abysmal. Um, I, I, hopefully they are changing, but over the years there have been many, many cases of, in particularly, uh, unauthorized voice recording, transfers of recordings to other customers, uh, translation. It is simply necessary for the companies because they want to improve their voice recognition. So their main aim is the voice recognition needs to be really good. That is one of the biggest problems, especially with background noise, with music playing. Um, and there you need to check what whether the actual the recorded voice and the uh, automatically translated voice, well, whether these agree somehow. And this is mostly done by humans. So there are humans sitting there listening to what was actually recorded and what the computer spit out. And that gives well, that gives all those people doing this kind of job access to often, how to say, private communication of, well, whatever client uh, was using the device at the moment. So there are a few headlines over the last years uh, that, well, mostly about the voice history. I recently very popular became the, the ring, uh, ring devices. Uh, where a lot of cases, well, IoT security, right? Um, it was open and other people could actually peep into other people's, also other people's rooms. So that makes it quite scary. And I mean, we don't know how far smart speakers are open to IoT attacks. Um, maybe some bad actor is actually listening to what is going on. So this is, these are all reasons why we actually in the, within the FOSS Asia community think that is not something we really want. And we don't think that is something we want to, uh, want to propose to friends, to the, to the community, to the population that they should do. And of course, well, our answer is Susie AI. It's a completely different approach. Well, not completely different, but uh, different from a company. So what is this Suzy AI? Um, well, it's a personal smart assistant. It's not surprising, right? It's very similar to Siri, uh, Google, whatever their names might be. Um, but it is built from the very beginning on or to be privacy aware. Um, has offline capability. So in principle, what our aim is that you can get one of these hardware devices, a smart speaker, and it can actually run offline. Well, of course, some things will not work offline. If you ask the weather about some remote place, that will not work offline. But actually, if I consider my own personal usage, most of the personal usage is, of course, music streaming. But if I put, for example, a smart device into my home and I have all my music onto a like a Plex streaming server. I actually don't need internet access. I need access to the, my home network and nothing else. So this is something where we really would like that at as much functionality as possible to be available offline and without server access, without well, yeah, a central server being connected. And one more thing that is of interest, because that is something we see in, in, in the big, uh, the big two or three is the development of skills. So that is rather closed. So there are APIs, but it's not, it's not really easy for a beginner to start developing their own skills, right? Um, there are companies doing this for their own, um, uh, for their own products, for their own services, for their own APIs, but um, users coming up with their own skills, this is something rather uncommon. So we developed a skill language that is easy to learn, something like you can do in a wiki page, we will see this later on. And last but not least, our main aim is, to, aim is that, it's com aiming at, that it's completely open source, and it's also a completely open ecosystem. So we are completely fine with people just writing 
further front ends, further back ends, further skills, using it in whatever way. That's the good thing of open source. So that's what sets it apart from most of the other uh, smart speaker systems. Um, just for a bit of background, so what is the origin of this? Uh, it started actually with a search engine, with a distributed search engine and Yassi and a tweet search uh, engine. So that is still a lock lock. So these two were developed by Michael Christian, um, one of the main developers in our group. And so out from there, we had discussions back then. Actually, I wasn't part when it originally started back then um, about why not making a smart speaker or a personal assistant of this. If you can ask already things like tweets about something and it searches for you and to have a distributed search system, then kind of these things was a starting point. And there are still traces, for example, in the code just for those interested. OK. One of the other things we really try right from the beginning was to get a lot of community involvement. So for us, it's important uh, to have a lot of people interested and in investing their time. And hopefully so we have participated in Google, several Google uh, Sum of Codes and Google Code In events. Um, sometimes, I, as far as I remember, sometimes the Force Asia was actually the biggest uh, participant in Google Sum of Code. We are doing a lot of workshops. Um, the most recent was at the Ars Electronica, a very famous, uh, well, art, electronic art event in Linz in Austria. There are several other workshops that happened this year. Most, um, some, some of them online, some of them offline. Um, some with artists. We had several installation workshops to get things running on different uh, software, different operating systems. So that's a lot of going on. Then the FOSS Asia community has their own uh, code heat contest. So a contest where people can contribute. It's not only to Susie I to whatever project uh, the FOSS Asia community does. And there are prizes to participate in the next, uh, for free, participate at the next uh, big conference and this kind of stuff. And we have a lot of GitHub channels where most of the communication is going on. So all of this is open to everyone. So there is no formal membership to FOSS Asia or something. Whoever wants to do, it's about doing stuff and being there of being a member. So let's go to a bit to the components of SUSE AI. So what makes uh, SUSE AI? There are basically three parts of it. The one is the brain, the brain of the SUSE AI. It's the SUSE server. I will go into details of each of those one later on. Then there are the skills. I already mentioned them. There are skills, what I'm not mentioned, so they are, can be actually developed in a wiki style way. So with a wiki front end for uh, skill development for this language is rather simple. And there's a large community. And then there are front ends, various front ends that communicate both with the brain and the skills um, for all kind of yeah operating system and devices. So let's go first to the, the brain, the SUSE server. So that's that's the core. It is the interpreter of the skill language, right? So what it does, it it receives questions and uh, does natural language processing on them. So analyzing the questions for, well, singular plural, for analyzing of, well, natural language processing. Then, and interpret then the question within the skill language. So whether a skill matches or not. Um, so there are further uh, properties of the SUSE server. This is like reflection and introspection. That means that it can actually look back at the history of questions asked before, the history of questions and and of users. So this is something where in principle it is not used by now, but long, ter long term uh, introspection can be handled in principle. Other things that are purely, well, rather on the technical side from the necessary side is use and device management. Um, so you can register, you can use it anonymously, you can use register as user, you can you register your devices. This is all uh, optional, in fact. So there are several deployments of this. Um, so as I mentioned before, we are for uh, privacy first. 
We have a deployment on the web. This is susi.ai, the website down here. Um, that is, of course, run on one of our servers, right? If you connect there, then, well, what you ask will be somehow, uh, we, we don't save the logs for long, but I mean, at least it has to be evaluated. But the point is that it is easy to make a local installation. And actually, we, 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 uh, we suggest everyone to do a local installation. So our aim is that you have at the end a local SUSE server running either on a little device. It's not so hard to run it or like, for example, on a Raspberry Pi that runs for you in your home. Then you have your brain at home. You don't need to contact any server for getting answers. So local installations are definitely possible. And this is what we also suggest. And well, we have typically on our hardware device, I will speak further on, uh, which is a Raspberry. So there we also have a SUSE server running. So this is about the SUSE server. Just it's written in Java. It is. Yeah, quite an extensive code base with considering that it has to do the full skill language. It has some skills built in also, but most part is the evaluation of the language, reflection, and um, yeah, user management device management. These are the main part. So the skills. Um, so these are the, 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 well, skills actually, other uh, smart speakers also call them skills. So these are typically question and answer stuff. So there's a huge collection, I mean, really huge collection of user contributed stuff. Um, and unfortunately, I have to say there are also because, well, uh, I guess uh, you have seen also very badly written wiki uh, articles. The problem is everyone can create their own uh, uh, skills. So that there is a very, quite varied quality, also quality in the skills. And this has to be, of course, uh, vetted, vetted skills or system skills. That's the reason why we have system skills and, and a quite reduced set by default. But in principle, there are a lot of skills out there. These skills also allow for API usage. Of course, in the, the moment you start using external APIs, your privacy will, will be compromised in some way because, well, there is a connection from an IP that is somewhere near to you, uh, to a whatever server. But it's useful, right? If you want to query questions about the weather, about the exchange rate or whatever comes to your mind. So these, um, skills have, we have a, you can write it by hand. You can, I mean, in a whatever editor, there's a wiki style editing support in, on the web. Uh, there's, re, there's testing environment. So there's quite a lot of stuff. The, the skill language itself, it's, well, pattern matching to question answers and uh, API calls. I, I won't go into details. It's not a workshop about writing skills, but um, yeah, so this is principle, the skills. So just to give you an idea, the skills are here on this website. These are the skills that our people have uploaded there. You can, as I mentioned before, if you have your own server at home, you can also have your own skills. There's no need that you publish anything. You can do all this kind of stuff on your local network, on your local server, SUSE server, and have all your local skills also there only. So these are skills that are, have been developed by the community. Uh, some are rather trivial, some are a bit nicer. Um, yeah, if you interest, just look around. Okay, and then the third part, this is about front ends. Um, front ends, there are quite a lot. So we have one for Android that is running. That's actually also has the ability to configure it, our smart speaker device I speak about later. Um, there is an iOS version in the works. Uh, I, I'm not sure how far the state is because this is I'm not what I'm, I'm managing. We have a desktop version. At the moment, it runs on Linux and partly on Mac. We have tested a bit on Mac already. Uh, we haven't tested it on Windows till now, mostly because, yeah, a lot of Python models have to be installed. Um, you see here an application window, but of course, there's also the, the, the option to run it in the background, like Cortana or like whatever integration uh, of a voice assistant. So you would have a, an icon in the notification area that tells where you can turn on and off the recognition and integration into the desktop is something that we will talk later. This is on the to-do list. 
and we have a web front end. Um, you can just chat on the website susi.ai with the with, with the SUSE server, with the chatbot there, and ask him some questions. So this is what I did yesterday. Well, of course, you have to be aware that if you use the Android version or the web version, both of them connect to the SUSE AI server on the web and does not to your local because you don't have one. The desktop client will try a local one first if there is one and is detected. Otherwise, it will connect to the SUSE AI on the background. Of course, you can block this also. Um, these are the front ends. Um, there are probably some more in development. I'm, I'm mostly responsible for, well, for the whole system and for the desktop clients um, since I'm not very much in Android development. So what does it mean with privacy aware? Um, I mentioned already, mostly, I mean, first we try not to send anything out, but speech to text, uh, that's the biggest problem, I guess, because translating speech to text is challenging. Um, and if you look at what uh, good speech to text systems uh, use for resources, it's surprising. We use by default deep speech, uh, a project by the Mozilla Foundation, um, that actually also works also on the Raspberry Pi, so on a small recipe, based on the recipe four. Um, on the desktop works excellent. Uh, we don't have a lot, of, a lot of language models by now, unfortunately. Uh, I hope this can might improve in the future, but yeah, the future of the, the project itself is a bit critical. I also have to say, if you don't mind, you can, of course, choose to use Google speech to text or Bing or Watson speech to text. These are configuration options. They, of course, provide much higher, at the moment, still much higher uh, accuracy than deep speech. Uh, Google is actually very good for Bing and Watson. You have to log in and you have to have some subscription, as far as I remember. For the Google speech to text is free. You can, at the moment, you never know with Google, right? Uh, you can use it freely. That works quite well, um, as long as you have internet connection and trust that your stuff is not uh, hold forever. For text-to-speech, we use, again, by default, uh, on-device, uh, the F-Lite system, which is OK. Um, you understand the answer. It's not the best uh, pronunciation, I would say, but mine is also not that good. Uh, of course, again, the option is here. If you don't mind, you can use alternatives like Google or Watson. So it's just a configuration setting. Um, for those who are less concerned about this stuff, uh, it's rather easy to switch to Google. Of course, the, it depends also on your usage of the device, whether information about yourself turns out. So if you, if you connect a lot of APIs, then, well, a lot of information will also go out to, to the stuff. And well, the server, as I said, we have the server deployed on, on the web. That is for everyone to use. Uh, we su suggest to use your private installation because then you're quite sure about your privacy, that the stuff, the questions you asked and the answers that come and the log files and everything is not available uh, to anyone else but yourself. So for those interested in it, in the development, right, it's everything is open source. You can go get it on GitHub uh, under the FOSS Asia organization. Practically all the projects have start with SUSE somehow. The SUSE installer is, so to say, that binds everything together. It installs on to a variety of deep, uh, Linux systems. At the moment, we support Debian. Suse, Fedora, Mint, I, I don't know, quite some um, Pop OS, uh, whatever it is. It's not everything we, because we have to install quite a lot of stuff, but uh, it tries to be as resilient as possible. The SUSE server itself is the development in Java of the SUSE server. There are also the de deployment branches with the ready compiled jar file and startup scripts that can be used. To see Python is uh, the interface library that to talk with the SUSE server and interpret the answers and, well, re rebuild it into some Python objects that they are used. And SUSE Linux is the, the client for Linux, but also for the Raspberry Pi. So it's used 
across all systems. Uh, it is written in Python, has the voice recognition, there is there uh, the communication with the server via SUSE Python, lots of other features like alarms and this kind of stuff. SUSE.ai is the web interface um, that is available both on the web SUSE.ai, you can see there. And there is even a more advanced version on the Raspberry Pi where you can register and control even your device. This is developed. There, there are a few, well, there are many other repositories in within the FOSS Asia project because we have a, a lot of other projects too. For example, one of the important ones is a fork of the speech recognition Python model, which unfortunately seems to be up and down. We, I have implemented support for deep speech within this project so that, well, we can use deep speech and Google and all the other uh, uh, TTS and STT services supported by speech recognition. And yeah, so if you look around, we're happy to ask, uh, answer your questions. Okay, so that's all for normal computers, desktops, whatever, but that's not all. We have actually built together, stuck together, a uh, still rather rough device, I have to say, um, but a smart speaker so built with the SUSE AI system. Um, what we are using is, so you, these are these devices, I actually have three or four here next to me. So these are Raspberry Pi based. I think the first version was running on Raspberry 2. Um, nowadays with deep speech, that doesn't work out. Uh, so Raspberry 3 plus or 4 would be much better. Uh, we use the receipt head for the microphone and well, for the audio output is at the same time, but that could be done differently. Um, we have just for the nice, we have this 3D printed cover with Susie Eye on it, but this is just to, to put it all together, I have the, 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 the loudspeaker. So all the components I mentioned before, so these are the server, the Linux front and the voice recognition, the web interface, everything, everything runs on the Raspberry Pi. And the installer, well, just sets everything up that you just plug in into your, into your environment. It starts normal, normally by default after a factory set, it, it sets up like a Wi-Fi hotspot that allows you to set up the, the Wi-Fi password so you not, don't need any cable. And after that, it connects, but you can leave it off because it's, it works, as I said before, right, right out of the box, uh, completely offline. Um, just the last thing, I, I think two days ago, I read an article that finally on, on the, on the Google devices, you can, uh, schedule, uh, uh, actions. I didn't know that wasn't possible till now because actually we have worked on this and have well, not complete, of course, but we have some support for timed functionality, delayed functionality. Uh, so that is something you typically see. Well, in, as I said, um, with my, uh, Google or Alexa, I usually use play on the music. Um, we try to have a functionality that supports and supersedes stuff that other companies are doing. So we have time for quite some time now. Okay, nothing goes without hurdles. Um, this is not only the coronavirus, we had to succeed. Um, you can imagine that such a huge project has quite some complication. And I think it's quite interesting to know also what are these problems. So first of all, it's a huge area, right? We are covering from backend, front end, uh, speech recognition, machine learning, uh, all kind of stuff. And everything is covered by volunteers, right? So that is something that of course reduces development speed. Uh, there's, well, yeah. Then, um, Lot of the, lots of the, a lot of the development that, that has gone on was in the code, was with coding programs like Google Summer of Code, Code in our own, uh, coding projects. And their participants come from a huge, widely diverse background. And they are, of course, cultural and, but also development skills diversity. So we have to deal with these problems. And that also makes the code base quite interesting because it's a wild mixture, right? You have a student with pull requests from students all around. Some of them are excellent. Some of them are good, but not excellent. And not all of them have 100% the same coding standards. Of course, we have requirements and coding standards, but everyone working in, 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 in real life is probably aware of these problems. 
And one of the big problems actually is short versus long term involvement, right? Most of our many, not most, but many of the participants stay only for these coding programs. I mean, they want to, many of them want to have a certificate that they have done in Google Summer of Code or coding or our own projects, yeah, Code Heat. Um, some of them stay and we are happy, of course, and they enjoy doing this development, but getting really good people for long-term involvement is, is really difficult. There are also other questions. These are more on the technical side. Um, popularity of coding language. This is a huge problem recently. Um, also, Java is still one of the most requested one. Um, Popularity-wise, we don't get many students wanting doing doing Java stuff, while a huge amount is doing JavaScript and Python stuff. So development on the on the server side is a bit slower, quite much slower than changes going on on the on the front end side and the yeah, Linux side. Well, then there is the running choke, uh, running target Python. Um, there, this is really a problem because every new version breaks half of the system because out of binary incompatibilities, everything has to be new installed. So that is really uh, somehow a problem. And then recently, where well, we have used deep, we use deep speech a lot. Unfortunately, some of you might know Mozilla. Uh, uh, has decided to scale down a lot development efforts, and one of these projects will be Deep Speech. So it is not completely clear what the future of Deep Speech is. We will hope that there is a future um, because we think it's a great project. Also, the Mozilla has done a lot of work on the on the uh, open what is open language, uh, uh, yeah, connecting. Uh, uh, yeah, spoken words for, for speech to text recognition. So that would be great if we could, there is some continuation. Okay, so what's our roadmap that's coming up? Well, very easy, right? One Susie I for each household. That is our dream, right? Of course, that's, uh, we are still a bit far from that, but um, long term, that would be nice. So currently, what we are really working on uh, to have this development device really like working just like out of the box, right? I mean, if our developers have this device and install it and something does not work immediately, they can fix it, right? That's easy, but that is not what we want to give out to other people. Everyone can try it out. It's not a problem. It's everything documented. Uh, we publish also already Raspberry Pi ready images. You just dump on the SD card. But they should work. And But we want to make it easier also for people to, well, get the device and play with it. Then what I'm also currently working on is desktop integration. So I want, as I mentioned before, a nice application icon down there that you can turn on and off uh, voice recognition and integrate it with actions of the desktop environment like KDA or GNOME or Cinnamon, whatever comes up. But that would be nice. Skill management, as I said before, there are a lot of skills. There are some system skills and some we have vetted or there are good skills. So it, what would be really nice would be a management that you can activate skills on a certain on certain criteria, management only a certain very restricted set or some all, all skills if you want to just be explorative and try all of the skills or just those vetted by, by, our, by our main developer. So there is something to do here. Um, server mesh, as I said, we really want people to install their own servers. We don't want them to use because well, out of privacy reasons. And then it's getting interesting with user registration and the server mesh. So imagine you have your smart speaker or maybe two or three, like I have two or three devices of the smart speakers. Each one runs its own uh, SUSE server. And then you have maybe a SUSE server running on your NAS storage or whatever. For, for the rest. So here, it would be nice to have a server mesh that, so transmitting which is the main server. There is one main server into the household and this one is used and registration of, of usernames and devices of the family members or so is done only there. So this is something we would really like. And last but not least, a steady development, right? I mean, since we're all volunteers and working with projects, well, real life, getting bread or rice on the table. Uh, it's not that easy to, to to have steady development, but that is something we 
hope to do. So if you want to get into contact with us, um, the best way is probably the Gitter channels. Um, there's the main Force Asia slash Force Asia, which is just a catch all for whatever questions you ask. You might be please ask here or there. Um, just also about FOSS Asia in general, announcements and stuff. And then there are a lot of FOSS Asia slash SUSI, whatever, according to the name uh, channel, where at, at times is very high activity about development, of course, depending also on the, on the course. And of course, whenever you want, you can contact me personally at one of these emails. And yeah. That's all from my side. Thanks everyone for your attention and for joining in. And I'm open now for questions and answers. Okay, thanks everyone.